So this lesson is labeled 6.6, 6.7 solutions. I feel like 6.6 to 6.7 in our textbook kind of went together. They went back and forth a little bit. So I think it might be easier. I just kind of mushed them together and there's gonna be one part that deals with solutions. And the second part of 6.6, 6.7 is going to deal with solving. So the solution part I actually have broken up into two parts, two videos for you to look at. Okay. This is I'll be looking at what the solutions could be, how many solutions you should get. So we're going to look at irrational and complex roots. Okay, We looked at a bunch of different answers. All of our answers always are a little different. We're not going to have rational answers, ones that end up being like 5 and negative 5, uh, 1 half. All rational numbers like we got in chapter 1 or what we talked about in chapter 1. You're not going to have irrational numbers. Square root of 3. Okay? five square root of two are all considered irrational numbers. We're also gonna have complex numbers. Complex numbers are the imaginary numbers or have imaginary numbers part of them. Uh, five plus two i is considered a complex number. Okay? These are all different ones that you're going to have to deal with and when we get into the second part of 6.6 and 6.7, the solving part, we're gonna see how many different answers, how many different types of solutions we can get. Now, conjugates are not be a big deal. Conjugates, pretty much a fancy word for opposite. Okay? Conjugate of five is negative five. Conjugate of square root of eight, sorry, square root of 10 would be negative square root of 10. So just taking the opposite value is considered going to be the conjugate or what we need to deal with here. Okay? The rational root theorem and the imaginary root theorem. Technically, there's two different theorems here. I kind of put them together just to kind of simplify it a little bit. If you are told an irrational value or imaginary value is a root to a polynomial, then so is its conjugate. Right? So if I'm telling you one irrational value is a solution, that means the opposite is also a solution. So if I give you something like this, polynomial p of x has roots 5 plus 8i, so well, if I'm telling you 5 plus 8i, a complex solution, a okay, complex value, if that's a solution, that means so is 5 minus 8i, the conjugate of it. Polynomial f of x has a root of square root of 13. So negative square root of 13 is also a solution then. Okay? So that's what that theorem said. Now that's not be important when I ask you to find polynomials given solutions. Okay? So we did this back a little while ago, find a polynomial that has the roots negative two and eight. And we worked backwards, given the solutions, we know binomials would be x plus two, x minus eight, and then we multiplied through. x squared minus eight x plus two x minus 16. That's just taking everything and multiplying it. And now that we simplify, x squared minus six x minus 16 would be the polynomial that has those two solutions, negative two and eight. Okay, so that was review what we did uh, a little while ago with these values. Now we're going to, okay, if I tell you that four and square root of three are solutions, okay, well we could start off by setting this up. That means that we know x minus four x minus square root of 3 are two binomials that give us those solutions. But what we have to remember is if square root of 3 is a solution, that means that negative square root of 3 is also a solution. Okay? So that means that x plus square root of 3 is needed here. Now, when we multiply these, you do have freedom. You can multiply in any direction or in any order you want. There's three binomials, so pick two of them and start multiplying. I'm going to suggest start with the conjugates of each other. Okay? Instead of starting with the first two, that x minus 4 and x minus square root of 3, start with x minus square root of 3 and x plus square root of 3. And look what happens. Multiplying through, you get x squared plus x square root of 3 minus x square root of 3 minus square root of nine. And if you simplify this, okay, looking at it, when we simplify it, the x square root of threes cancel each other out, and the square root of nine goes to three. So we have x squared minus three. So 
So all of our radicals kind of disappear. They cancel out or simplify. Bring down our x minus 4. And now we just have two binomials to multiply. x cubed minus 3x minus 4x squared plus 12. x cubed minus 4x squared minus 3x plus 12. I just put it in standard form there to simplify it or to clean it up a little bit. And there's the, bino or the polynomial that gave us 4 square root of 3 and negative square root of 3. Okay? So there's that example. And this is the important part. Remembering that the conjugate is also one of our solutions. So we had 1, 2, 3 binomials before we started multiplying. Next example, polynomial, find me the polynomial that has 2 and 2 plus i. So 2 plus i is a complex number. So if 2 plus i is a solution, 2 minus i is also a solution. Now, watch how I set these ones up. We're going to have our x minus 2, x minus 2 plus i. Okay, that 2 plus i is to stay together. So when I'm minusing that, x, you have to make sure that 2 plus i is in parentheses together. x minus 2 minus i. So again, that 2 minus i has to stay together. Okay, so you do have to be careful about how you're writing this out. Now, when I multiply these, again, I'm going to start with the conjugates, the 2 plus i and the 2 minus i. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, though, is get rid of some of those parentheses by distributing the negative sign x minus 2 minus i, x minus 2 plus i. Okay, so it's going to be a little more. This is going to get pretty big, but just like before how the radical is either simplified or canceled, same thing here should happen with those i's. Those i's should either simplify or cancel out. x squared minus 2x plus xi minus 2x plus 4 minus 2i minus xi plus 2i minus i squared. So like I said, it, that's pretty big. Let's simplify some of those things. Can we cancel out? Well, positive xi, negative xi. We have negative 2i, positive 2i. The negative i squared is going to go to plus 1 because i squared is negative 1, so negative negative 1 is a plus 1. And now if we put all this stuff together, x squared minus 4x plus 5, bring down my x minus 2, all the i's cancel out or simplify, just like I said would happen. And now we just have to multiply through that binomial. x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x minus 2x squared plus 8x minus 10. Simplify some things. x cubed minus 6x squared plus 13x minus 10. And there would be the binomial, or sorry, it's actually a quartic, a cubic quartic uh, polynomial there that gives us solution 2, 2 plus i, and 2 minus i. Okay, so a little more work here. Take another second and look at what happened up here. Maybe rewind it and go through that work again. But make sure you're paying attention to the signs and what I'm doing here. Distributing that negative sign to both of these to get rid of the set of parentheses and then multiplying through. Okay, so this is the first part of this uh, solution section. There's one more small little part on solutions, uh, another video. Okay.